experiences like dissolution of the body uh, in uh, during the um, practice yeah this just you know sometimes you read it in a book and you can think what is this it's uh, everything depends on the individual and we shouldn't blame anyone for the experience that happens to us because when we start to blame anyone outside then we automatically get to the victim state yeah and we can stuck in this like forever for ages <laughs> 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 one of the main uh, steps in any buddhist tradition is the practice of forgiveness Welcome to this new episode and today I am here with Max. How are you? Perfect. Very nice. So Max is a Tibetan yoga practitioner as well as a tea enthusiast. So first of all, I'd like to ask you, what is your story in life? I'm a major of uh, economics and I have a doctor degree, PhD in economics. But uh, to be really sincere, it was uh, it was not really something I was truly interested in. So uh, mainly it was uh, for the purpose of avoiding uh, army service. Uh. You know, so there were a few options. Like first, you had to like hurt yourself, or <laughs> you know, <laughs> or to um, I don't know, maybe pay some money under the table. <laughs> But uh, another option was to. Uh, get a higher education. Okay. So uh, I went for this uh, out of need rather than out of uh, something. But anyway, at some point, uh, at some point, I just woke up with the word yoga in my uh, mind, and at that time, at, it was about maybe 1998, okay. and uh, I didn't know. I mean, like yoga, what is this? And of course, at that time, there was no Google, so I had to Yahoo for it. <laughs> May maybe some of you even don't know <laughs> what is Yahoo, but <laughs> anyhow. Uh, so I found uh, one option is a course at Indian Embassy uh, in Russia, in Moscow. Uh, so they had a cultural center at Embassy and they were offering free classes of yoga and uh, Indian dance, uh, Bharatanatyam and uh, Odyssey, as far as I can remember. Yeah. Anyhow, my first uh, teacher was Nagendra Kamat. Uh, I still remember his name and uh, I felt uh, with this practice, I felt in love with this practice uh, from the first time, although I think I couldn't understand really what is it what is all about it was just like maybe some kind of karmic connection you know okay. because i know that uh, some people for example when they uh, try to practice agnisara kriya when you do all this muscle movements with your stomach they can uh, they can try it for like months yeah but uh, for me i just try it and Literally from the second time I could do <laughs> this. It's called the Naoli Kriya as well, similar? Yeah, 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 okay, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. Difficult, yeah. <laughs> and for you, like, it's super easy, right? Like, yeah, like this, you know. Very predisposed, yeah. Yeah, at that time I didn't know, um, uh, I mean, how it can happen like this. I, okay, second major event, I would say that uh, started to change the course, is uh, at that time I was working at a... Uh, a digital photo magazine and uh, suddenly I uh, noticed a book on my colleague's table mm -hmm. and uh, the book was by uh, Buddhist master Thich Nhat Hanh, mm -hmm. a Vietnamese monk. Yeah. It was called uh, something like Path of White Clouds, so it was 
the Buddha's biography. Mm -hmm. It was Buddha's biopic, and uh, while I was reading it, uh, tears literally were falling from my eyes, you know. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so uh, it was like uh, I was touched by that, and uh, when I saw words Vipassana, uh, I immediately started to search for it. So at that time, the only option was uh, uh, Goenka, uh, Vipassana in Goenka tradition. Sitting all the time. Sitting all the time, uh, qu uh, silent. Uh, and uh, the conditions were pretty rough. Uh, it mm -hmm. was uh, uh, abandoned uh, Russian uh, uh, children's camp or children's resort. Yeah, it was like... Uh, it was uh, interesting conditions outside, but the main point, of course, was the practice. And uh, those who survived the first five days, <laughs> they, uh, they could uh, reap rewards, yeah, mm -hmm. they could get a reward. And uh, one of uh, the biggest rewards was the understanding of really how, the, how yoga works. Uh, because all this time, during all these uh, days, seven, eight days, Night, I really don't remember, it was something between 7 and 10 days, I cannot recall now. At the last day we were allowed to do whatever we want, we were allowed to communicate, and of course first thing um, I tried to do, I was, uh, I tried to do some yoga posture, so I think it was yeah, something like that. And then when I touched my uh, right foot, yeah. uh, right foot I just felt the circle, like connect, connection, like with energetical connection. Wow. And I was just like, ah, so that's how it works, <laughs> you know? Yeah. It's <laughs> experiential, you know, you can yeah. read it in the books, but you got to feel it, you know, yes, to yes, know what yes, it is. Yes, yes, yes. So before it was like, uh, mostly like some kind of uh, weird acrobatics, because obviously you can uh, get your... Uh, abdominal muscles fit or buttocks fit uh, uh, going to gym more easier you know but yeah <laughs> yeah yeah it's for sure i mean the yoga the physical aspect is the first step right for me it was the first uh, aspect uh, and but when 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 you suddenly feel this stuff then it's just like next step next step yeah and you had this realization at the end of the Goenka. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. And that was your first meditation retreat, yeah? Yeah. Of course, before I tried to, to follow, uh, like, uh, in the books or something, but uh, uh, the real experience, uh, like, you know, it was also very interesting when we were sitting, and at some point, I just started to hear cracks. And I realized that it was like people were sitting in different postures, but some of them, of course, were sitting like in Padmasana. Uh -huh. And their spine, they started to get straightened, and it was crack from that, like, click, 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 click. Wow. <laughs> and, you know, it was really interesting, like, okay, to the, to the right, someone to the right, spine got aligned automatically, like someone in front, someone in back. That was like really something like, Another small re realization. Another, yeah. another <laughs> small realization. Yeah, then of course, uh, all these uh, basic uh, experiences like dissolution of the body uh, in, uh, during the uh, practice. Yeah, this just, you know, sometimes you read it in a book and you can think, what is this? It's like some kind of a fairy tale or what? Sounds like crazy or not real, right? If you know, if it's only like m mysticism in general, any kind of mystical experience. Uh, you know, can, you cannot really, it's called the, the in, ineffability of uh, mystical experiences. When you try to reduce them to words, you miss the point. Of course, of right? course, of course. It's difficult, whilst the experiential aspect of it is what really matters. Right? And you add it early on, you add it because of a strong predisposition, it seems. I think, yeah, of course. And um, uh, I remember the words of my, one of my Buddhist teachers here in Thailand. So when he heard this story about my tears and like this, he made a joke. And uh, he said, like, you know, when you was Buddha's disciple, you didn't listen to him well. That's why <laughs> now you have to cry uh -huh. <laughs> while reading the <laughs> same words all over again. And I just, uh, maybe it's partly a joke, maybe it has some truth in it, but anyhow, 
Yeah, I believe that uh, some of us are more connected to one uh, stream, some are more connected to another stream. I obviously have uh, some kind of connection to this yeah, stream, let's say so. Yes, because uh, the first yoga experience, the asana, was a uh, Hindu style yeah, from the yeah. Indian embassy yeah. there. Whilst now you're moving on to sort of a uh, more... Well, Govenka is also kind of Indian style, right? Well, Buddhism came from India, yeah. although most of Thai people consider uh, it uh, their national uh, like uh, property. Mm -hmm. But, uh, I mean, uh, it's, it's beyond any nat national idea. For sure. Idea. It's a gift to, to humanity. Yeah, yeah. And of course, I had an uh, Indian teacher and uh, uh, Hindu teacher, a proper um, tantric teacher in uh, Sri Vidya tradition. Okay. Although Sri Vidya cannot be taught to foreigners, or uh, anyhow, there was like a branch of this knowledge uh, which was allowed to be taught to introduce to foreigners. And uh, uh, he, he, he introduced me to mantra yoga. Yeah. So uh, gradual, when you start to chant uh, bija or seed syllables for every chakra. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was rather brief experience. And although I made uh, quite a uh, swift progress, um, at some point uh, our, our ways separated. You know, at that time I was too much emotional and uh, uh, I think all my, uh, my these emotions, they also caused uh, major problems to people around me and to myself. Like oh. I actually uh, created um, havoc uh, in, this in, in our community oh. by accusing our teacher of uh, doing some, something improper things like some uh, uh, Mm, what we call now is sexual harassment or whatever. Oh, seriously, but or not on yourself? Not, not on myself, but uh, on uh, some other students. Okay. So uh, I know that uh, also it is uh, maybe uh, a relevant topic here in Kopangan especially, but uh, I would like to say that uh, currently my relation to this totally changed and uh, yeah, I think that um, everything depends on the individual and we shouldn't blame anyone for the experience that happens to us. Because when we start to blame anyone outside, then we automatically get to the victim uh, state. Yeah. And we can stuck in this like forever, for ages. <laughs> uh, it's, not, it's not a good way of uh, living life, I don't think, either, you know, and uh, it's very much promoted by the current culture in the media. Yes, you know, you yes, know, it's like... Victimized it's in every yes, another, you yes, know, in yes, the way. Yes, yes, yes. I, yeah. I think the hero's journey I like more, you know, that uh, life uh, presents some challenges <laughs> and, uh, you know, there are dragons to slay and yeah. you do your best to do it, yes, but uh, yeah. you're, you're empowered to go through your own experience yes, uh, yes, as, yes. A, as a sort of, you know, leading it directly rather than being a victim. Yes, I, I agree. Okay, so you had this uh, episode where uh, you had some con you created controversy in in this uh, community particularly. Yes, yeah, so I had to quit uh, this uh, this okay. community, and uh, of course, uh, uh, yeah, it was a very good experience in terms of uh, touching the real tradition. Okay. At first, and uh, of course, uh, he helped me to understand many things about what mantra is. You know, yeah. Uh, wow. and, uh, uh, and that was in Russia still, yeah? Yeah, yeah. In Moscow, is that right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Very nice. Yeah. Okay, okay, yeah. okay. I also was introduced to Tibetan tradition by uh, uh, one of uh, my friends. And uh, I started to follow Tibetan tantric tradition, uh, the, pr the, the proper way. Like, you, maybe you know that uh, in Tibetan tantra, uh, there are like several steps. Mm -hmm. So before you uh, get to the before you get to practice like some kind of um, tantras, you have to first to pass four primarily practices. Okay. These primarily practices are to purify your body, speech and mind. Okay. So uh, it's open information and you can uh, Google for it. So one of the main practices are uh, purification of 
speech or energy. Mm -hmm. And for this uh, reason, we, m most Tibetan schools, they use the practice of Vajrasattva. Yeah. So it's when you um, maintain certain visualization and recite a 100 syllable mantra. Okay. And you have to uh, do it uh, 100,000 repetitions. Wow, that's quite a commitment. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's in Vajrayana Buddhism, yeah, I think it's called. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, okay. yeah. Uh, then uh, uh, another step is to purify the body, and uh, you have to do uh, 100,000 prostrations. Prostrations, okay. it's like a, a you can. Um, some kind of Surya Namaskara, okay? Yes. Okay. <laughs> the sun salutations in a, in a, in yeah, a yeah. more, sun, more conventional sun, yoga. Uh, <laughs> very similar to sun salutations, uh, maybe a bit sim uh, simpler. Uh, so you basically you bow to uh, teacher, mm -hmm. you bow to. Uh, okay, uh, Guru Deva Daiki. Yeah, so you bow to your. A meditational teacher. deity, okay, and deity. you bow to uh, Dakin is like a um, female form. Yes. Yeah? Uh, and uh, then you do prostrations, and you also visualize that all your mandala, like all people who are connected with you, your friends, your enemies, and uh, like mm -hmm. uh, everyone, they are doing the same with you. And, uh, Keep yeah, your friends close and your enemies close. Uh, yeah, yeah of, course, <laughs> of course. Actually, one of the main uh, steps in any Buddhist tradition is the practice of forgiveness. Okay, sure. And uh, then uh, where, where you have to purify your energy on this level. And maybe we get back to this when I describe my experience in Thailand because sure. I was ordained here in Thailand ah, okay, okay. for a few months. You've been ordained as yeah, a... Yeah. As a monk. As a monk yeah. Ah, wow, yeah. that's also quite interesting. Yeah, yeah. So much <laughs> I'm learning as I go along here. <laughs> okay, so you're saying you've been purifying and doing the four preliminary practices. So you mentioned yeah. two already. Yeah, uh, yes. So, uh, well, anyway, and then, and then you can, you, you <coughs> after this four, four preliminary, you can start on the tantric path of Buddhism. Yeah, so according to, uh, let's say, so your sanskaras or um, tendencies yeah. you get connected to a certain uh, meditational deity okay and then you maintain uh, you you do this practice and uh, and that was uh, that was it it was like 20 years ago 15 years ago when was it you were in I Russia? think I think uh, Tibetan connection started in about 2000 maybe six. 2006, okay. 2005, okay. 2006. Okay, like 17 something, years ago. Something, something like that. Yeah. Okay, okay. And then you started on the path, and uh, you really naturally found uh, this path very interesting, isn't of that right? Of course. And, and uh, you continued. know, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's uh, not just a uh, Christmas tree. It's a Christmas tree with all these decorations, you know, mm. all these uh, mantras and uh, uh, things you, ca you cannot say what it is. Wow, you know, wow. very, very what, a disc what a discovery. At some point, uh, I, um, I started to uh, practice and uh, study also Tibetan medicine, uh -huh. like so Tibetan massage. Uh -huh. And uh, my teacher also asked me to be a guide for uh, people to uh, take them to Tibetan hospital in uh, Tibet. Okay, 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 okay. okay. So at that point, I thought that uh, I want to move there and to uh, study maybe Chinese language also to learn some acupuncture, things like that. Uh, but uh, while well, I, I already packed my things and then uh, I received a call from my friend with whom we started, with whom I started to practice uh, Tai Chi and Wing Chun. And he said, uh, come to Kopangan, I'm going to make a um, workshop there and I said well I'm on the way to China anyway so why not and uh, so that's how I arrived to Thailand first oh. time in 2011 and, uh, and that's uh, that's how my life changed completely like uh, again because you came to Thailand and you fell in love with the country is that of, right? of with course. Kopangan of particularly of you know? course of course so I arrived here and next morning I, uh, we went to the beach, it was in Sritanu, 
I uh, made my first step into the water. I just uh, went into the water. And the first uh, thought that came to my mind, F word, China, I'm staying here. <laughs> you know? Yeah, you just you said, this is the place. Yeah. This is the place I want to be. Yeah. And that was, as you said, like a long time, 12 years ago or something. And uh, kind of on and off, you've been coming back for 12 years. Well, uh, um, since, uh, since day one, I stayed on Copangan for about three years. And uh, then I went back to Russia, maybe for five months, maybe for one year. I lost passport, started to have this uh, drama story again, which led me to the monastery because, you know, uh, I, star I, um, I started to do some, let's say, so business activity here, mm -hmm. was involved in some business activity on Kopangan and also I in, uh, in some relationships. But uh, these uh, relationships were very, um, uh, I wouldn't call them healthy. Oh, okay. I was feeling like victimized all the time. Oh, okay. And, uh, you know, uh, I, I kind of realized that, okay, uh, everyone around seems wrong. It means there's something wrong here. So I have to fix it. Right? So what do I do? Uh, so that's uh, how I decided to go to the temple. Okay, 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 okay. And uh, of course, uh, the most famous temple in Thailand is Ajahn Chah. Mm -hmm. uh, Ajahn Chah in Udon, uh, in Udon Thani, right? Okay. Uh, but while I was on the way there, I got a call from one, my other friend, and he like said, okay, what are you up to? I'm going to Udon Thani to maybe for some meditation course or something. And he said, wait, 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 wait. Come to Loi. Loi is a province near uh, near Konken, Konken Isan, yeah. Isan area. And I said, okay. Anyhow, when I arrived uh, there, uh, monks uh, who greeted me there, they were very friendly, and I stayed in a tent at some uh, monks' quarters. And uh, first thing in the morning, another friendly monk he asked me, so do you do meditation? And I said, mm, of course I do, you know. And he said, stop, don't do it again. I just like, what? <laughs> yeah, I, li I like what? And she said, why you want to change something? Just relax and accept everything as, as it is. You know, at, it was, at, at the same time, it was very surprising. And uh, it also, was not such a big surprise because Tibetan tradition and a part of a Tibetan tradition is the teaching of uh, Dzogchen or Great Perfection. Mm -hmm. It also teaches uh, that everything is already perfect. You don't have to change anything. You just have to abide in this natural state and uh, let everything unwind or unbind by itself. You created too much tensions already in everywhere, in your body and in your mind. So now it's just relax, relax. <laughs> <laughs> accept, <laughs> relax, <laughs> accept. Yeah, and uh, um, of course, for most people, it's not easy to relax and accept. Uh, and that's why in that Thai temple, uh, one of the main practices to help to relax was the practice of forgiveness. Mm -hmm. So uh, it was like a daily, few times per day practice. We had to read some certain text and um, also do some kind of small ritual. Okay, so now you're going to perform uh, a very interesting exercise. Can you introduce the exercise? What is it? It is uh, the declaration uh, of, or rather, it is a forgiveness statement. Okay. So uh, this practice, uh, this forgiveness statement is used to uh, dissolve uh, all our karmic debts and uh, all our past karma that is binding us to uh, different patterns of suffering and, and suffering. I request all uh, Buddhas, and Bodhisattvas, angels to preside over my forgiveness statement. And um, I would like to ask you 
for forgiveness. Um, if I uh, hurt you on any level by my body, speech and mind in any lifetimes, this time if I offended you anyhow or in uh, past lives, if he, we had any uh, such kind of a connection, uh, I also would like to ask for forgiveness for any uh, uh, wrongdoings for the all teachers, all uh, dharma, of spiritual teachers, anyone, animals, and any sentient beings. I also forgive everyone, I forgive you, and I forgive anyone who ever caused any problem for me, I forgive anyone who owes anything to me, let everything this be freed and dissolved in the nature as it is. So. Ahosi, ahosi, ahosi. That's how we do it. And it's like a, you can also interpret it as like a mind training. Okay. So uh, little by little, uh, people who tend to uh, feel victimized or maybe feel uh, guilty for being abusive, they start to release this, you know, all these uh, stories. And yeah, okay. it's, it's hey. uh, for, for, from my experience, it's a really powerful stuff, you know. Thank you. That's, <laughs> that sounds great. Thanks for the demonstration. And uh, I mean, I think we can probably delve into it because um, you mentioned a little earlier that uh, you were ordained as a monk. After experiencing this, I decided that I need to stay a bit longer mm, in this uh, place. In Loi? Uh, yeah, in Loi. So I asked for permission to be ordained and uh, the, the teacher, uh, Lung Po Po Si, and the temple is Rom Bodhi Dharma International. Mm -hmm. uh, he allowed me to stay there and uh, so that's uh, how I was ordained as a monk and uh, started, yeah, started to uh, delve deeper into this culture and into, uh, into specifically this tradition. So, yeah, because I met you recently um, during a Chinese uh, celebration just a few days back. Yeah, yeah. And uh, you were serving tea there. And, uh, you know, I, I had uh, such a good connection immediately because of uh, what seemed to me a very deep understanding of, uh, you know, Chinese tradition. You told us about uh, a very beautiful story with two different end endings. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, uh, yeah. So basically, I, I, I got immediately that uh, you had lots of knowledge around Buddhism. But I didn't know you were a monk, but that's, that's very interesting. But can I ask you a little bit more about Tibetan yoga? Because uh, people are familiar with yoga uh, as the Western style of yoga is, which is mostly the asanas. Um, but what is Tibetan yoga instead? Uh, so uh, Tibetan yoga is actually very similar to Hatha yoga. Okay. Uh, but it's stated from the beginning that uh, the purpose of uh, this system is to balance energy, to be able to enter the higher states of consciousness okay. and specifically to help to develop two more inner heat or inner bliss. Uh, also in Tibet there are no, no such words as yoga. Yoga is an Indian word and um, the system that uh, I've been introduced to is called the Tantra of Union of Sun and Moon. Okay. And uh, Sun and Moon refers to uh, lunar, lunar and solar yeah. energy. And uh, uh, yeah, so it's all in this context. It's also said to be introduced by Mahasiddha Hunkara. And uh, uh, Hunkara, he had his name, Kara, it means sound, and Hum, it means the sound, Hum, or humming, yeah? Uh, it, it is a story that, um, it, 
the story goes that one uh, villager was very uneducated and uh, for sure tantras with all these visualizations were not for him okay so his teacher uh, said to him you just practice hum <laughs> and <laughs> that's how she attained the enlightenment and uh, actually i hope we will get back to the sound meditations later on mm -hmm. but uh, the hum is the source of all sound meditations sure, anyhow sure. So um, this tantra, tantra of the union of sun and the moon, it describes a system of physical exercises, visualizations, and pranayamas, mm -hmm. and it consists of uh, uh, three preliminary sets of exercises uh, and five main sets of exercises. Each exercise is called yantra. Uh, yantra, uh, yantra. Uh, normally, when we say yantra, we mean like some drawing on the wall, yeah. some picture or mandala. The flower of life. A uh, flower of life. Yeah, but uh, in um, uh, here in this context, it means mechanism like clockwork, some gears. Okay. And uh, you can see that uh, most of the mandalas or yantras, they also look like some geometrical patterns uh, some gears like some mechanism and that's what they actually are <laughs> so anyhow this yantra these yantras are performed by body uh, so uh, each yantra consists of a uh, phase of inhalation hold exhalation and sometimes breath retention okay so um First, we start with the purification of mm, prana by doing purification, performing purification breath. Then we uh, do some purification. It's called purification of elements when we chant uh, syllables of elements, visualize colors, lights of uh, elements, and then we move on to more physical part. So first. The physical part is uh, called sijong or uh, joint loosening exercises. Okay, okay, okay. So uh, it's uh, like uh, some warm up. It sounds yeah, like it's, <laughs> it's uh, shaking joints, like ten, uh, making muscle contraction and relaxations. Um, then uh, the second set is called purification of prana, or it's lung sun in Tibetan. Uh, and, um, during this set of exercises, we really free our uh, upper body and uh, restore this mobility, you know, because mm -hmm. to, like, for example, like, so we open gradually uh, our rib cage in uh, all directions. Okay, okay, okay. And so lots of awareness because uh, yeah, you have yeah. to be very present of whilst you do each course, exercise. Of course, of course, and uh, okay. uh, they are they are they are complex coordinated uh, exercises because you have to uh, coordinate your movement and your breath. It's important that your body, speech, and mind is synchronized. So you speak what you think and you do what you think. <laughs> uh, because, so hard, uh, huh? because of course, uh, most of the problems in modern society are caused by lies mm -hmm. or by distorting information. It's when you think one thing, you speak another thing, and you do third thing, and it means your being <laughs> is totally out of sync. Your energy is uh, totally out of sync uh, with your body and with your reality and. Uh, uh, you know, being authentic uh, is uh, one of the most important uh, sort of steps towards self-actualization. Also in modern psychology, in Jungian psychology, for instance, is an authentic authenticity. And being able to go beyond the persona that you wear every day, the mask. I mean, it's, uh, it's something that uh, uh, is close to my heart. You know, I'm yes. trying to become, yes, yes. you know, more naturally authentic. Considering the limitations that you have, we have from culture, you know, because I think you need to be authentic and tell the truth, knowing that uh, every social context has a different sort of forms or ways for you to present your truth, right? Of course, so of course. Um, uh, being truthful is only one part of uh, the story because 
uh, yeah, so we have to be truthful, but we also have to be non-violent, right? In, if we study like yogic sources, so yeah. your truth uh, shouldn't, you know, uh, be aggressive. Free speech with an open heart. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> as much as possible, right? And with uh, uh. respect to uh, everyone's b boundaries, of course. And uh, it's uh, the most uh, dynamic uh, set of all of them, where you like do you know like okay, you <laughs> oh, <laughs> stuff right. stuff like this, <laughs> and um, after that uh, you move on to pranayamas and uh, main uh, series of yantras, nashtanga vinyasa motion awareness also matters and also one of the founders of Ashtanga Vinyasa Yoga he also said that Vinyasa is the most important part of Ashtanga Vinyasa okay okay okay, okay. Hmm? sounds good okay so that's Tibetan Yoga in a nutshell so it would be very interesting to be able to practice it have, have you taught it in Kopanga? Uh, yes, yes, actually um, I taught it because uh, first time when I arrived uh, here to Kopangan last year, uh, my friend, uh, he asked me to uh, introduce this to him and uh, we were practicing like um, daily for, for a few months in Chinese temple. Yeah. And uh, I made it uh, open for uh, anyone, and a uh, few people came, few people were interested. I uh, hosted these classes on a donation basis, yeah. but uh, at the very, very early, we started at, uh, we were studying at six. Six in the morning, yeah. Yeah, so very few committed individuals <laughs> came. <laughs> <laughs> very few committed individuals came, but every everyone who came they stayed uh, they stayed for at least a few uh, few classes and um, some some were joining like for months or more okay, okay. some less but uh, everybody was very happy and said like yeah we studied in india we had like our yoga teacher certificate but uh, we uh, uh, regard this uh, system as uh, very profound and uh, we are grateful for introducing this to us and uh, for me this uh, for me this is a very good compliment yeah. especially for people who traveled around the world and uh, they can compare you know uh, with other practices etc with, with other practices. that's very cool i think we could spend like hours going into you know um, tibetan yoga or just the buddhist tradition because of course you got so much knowledge of it i can tell immediately um, but uh, I want to talk about tea a little bit because, of course, one of your passions is also tea. And uh, as I mentioned, when I met you just the other day, you were, uh, you know, uh, serving tea. And uh, what is uh, your passion for tea, how it came about and uh, what can you tell us about it? Uh, so uh, everything also started uh, in uh, Moscow when one of my friends um, introduced me to a tea house. He invited me to a tea house. And it was like a Ch Chinese style tea house in uh, Moscow. Uh, I think the tea culture as popular, maybe even more popular than in China currently. Okay. Uh, because I've been to China, maybe some um, northern parts, and I haven't seen there even one such tea house. Mm -hmm. Anyhow, um, that was very interesting experience for me uh, when we tasted tea and we only drank tea. Uh, at that time, it was like uh, end of 90s, probably. Uh, I was more into beer and vodka, you know, <laughs> <laughs> this, this kind of stuff. And um, we were maintaining very good and um, very nice, friendly conversation without beer and uh, without any stimulants. Uh, well, tea also is a stimulant, yeah. but it's not such a, you know, like... A it's a gentle stimulant. A gentle stimulant, yes. yeah. It's a gentle stimulant. So... Mm, so you learned it there, basically? I got, I got, I got, I got uh, basically high with the tea, and pretty high in terms of the frequency. Yeah, it's not low frequency, it mm. was high, high vibe. 
And um, I also studied a bit um, volunteering at the tea house. Okay. Uh, but uh, anyhow, this uh, never became my passion as, um, uh, for example, some people, they can speak about tastes of different teas and um, describe, uh, tell the stories of every tea and uh, all the things. For me, it's not really about the taste. Uh, for me, it's about the company and atmosphere it can create. And uh, that's what my uh, guests were valuing when I was offering tea here okay, okay, at okay. Uh, Seaboard and uh, in a few other places. Uh, people were always like, uh, uh, people always appreciated that the atmosphere that uh, was like opening, the space that was opening, space for deep talks and uh, meaningful conversations. Very nice. And uh, sometimes even like, uh, um, opening some business opportunities and because of course it's nice to uh, do some business with the people who you feel resonant to sure. and uh, to such spaces to such places uh, people uh, they get attracted automatically but tea itself is very interesting herbal drink um, and uh, its qualities were noticed by also Buddhist teachers like for example Bodhidharma the founder of Shaolin monasteries mm -hmm. A monastery he introduced the tea as the a substance to help monks to meditate to feel less sleepy and uh, of course it's very um, uh, good oxy antioxidant and uh, detox uh, detoxifier and um, it was respected in uh, Chinese traditional medicine as that and of course there are many uh, different kind of teas and uh, the funny thing is that it uh, they all have same genetics but depending on the place where they were grown and the um, fermentation process or maybe some cooking process uh, every tea tastes different yep. and uh, it, this reminds me uh, of us like uh, human beings you know we also share same genetics but uh, depending on the where we were grown, uh, our environment, we all uh, like have different tastes. <laughs> yeah, right? yeah, for sure. Yeah, many so. varieties of uh, of salts uh, as yeah. well as well as of teas, and uh, of course, there's uh, in, in green tea particularly there's something called L-theanine, which is an amino acid that smooth the eye of tea, making it relaxing at the end and. Uh, very different flavor and obviously very different effect compared to coffee. Right? I was uh, a tea drinker for six years uh, when I quit coffee and, uh, and now I'm back on coffee once a day. Then, uh, <laughs> then, uh, then another thing that tea can help uh, to develop these uh, receptors because uh, normally uh, in Chinese co ch tea culture you drink tea without any sweeteners, without any yeah, sugar sure. or whatever. And, um, and that's how I feel that uh, you can also develop your senses. Uh, that's lovely. Uh, the sensitivity. Yes. Uh, yeah, tea is a great element for sure. And again, you know, I think we could just start a whole episode just looking at tea. Of course. Uh, but, of uh, course. you know, I think uh, this is just an introduction of uh, this uh, fascinating uh, individual I just met, indeed, Max. There are many places uh, that, uh, you know, you could uh, go and live in. And uh, you live in Thailand particularly in Kopangan. Why do you love Kopangan so much? A very good question. Uh, so uh, while uh, uh, getting ready for this interview, I, um, I was thinking, what should I answer? And then this answer came to me that um, actually, I think that uh, we, I am Kopangan. Uh, you see, this is the thing that we think uh, I like Kopangan because the weather or because this or because that but according to what we are taught in all these uh, cultures we experience uh, this we experience this experience right according to our uh, according to our you can say it karma or according to our dreams intentions aspirations and according to our frequency. Mm -hmm. So I believe that, um, I, I believe in such a way. 
Okay, as I within, can, so I without. Sorry. Of course, yes, as within, so without. Uh, oh, I could, I could um, uh, name a few places that I like in Copangan most because uh, also the Copangan uh, can be different for many people. For example, for people who stay in uh, Hadrin, uh, it's one part of the story. For people who stay in Tonnepan, uh, Copangan is a totally different world. Uh, Seritanu is uh, like uh, another dimension and uh, you know Bantai is uh, a whole other story, right? Yes, it's very diverse <laughs> and different parts of to the island. Yeah, yeah, it's like uh, really it's like different worlds. So. And you're staying in a, in a temple, right? In a Chalaklan yeah, temple. So cur cur currently I'm staying in a temple um, and uh, yeah, I came there intentionally to, you know, to have a kind of reset and to uh, decide uh, to plan what what to do next. Uh, what, and, and do you have a plan? And well, uh, my intention or aspiration was to start uh, offering retreats, mm -hmm. and uh, I've been offered a few opportunities, um, like to set up a half luxury uh, retreat center in wow. uh, Tansadet. Um, then um, to start offering it at um, villas, uh, villas in Krabi province, okay. which I also very much like that place. Mm -hmm. Krabi is another part of Thailand and very, very, very nice. Yeah. Very nice. Uh, abundant with nature's riches. Uh, but the most recent development, and uh, this uh, resonates. Um, at, um, mostly with me uh, is when um, yesterday I went to I visited the Chinese temple and the watcher or overseer of this temple he offered me to uh, host retreats there this option it really resonates with me more and it's in Chalaklam here in Kopangan would be fantastic and uh, you would do the retreats with meditation with the um, Yoga, yeah, what yeah, kind of yeah. I, w uh, I would, um, well, of course, um, there are a few programs. One is uh, more meditation and yoga, and uh, it's like a temple style. So full power temple style transformation retreat when you wake up as early as you can, like 5 a.m., start with meditation, yoga, then a spa time where your body get relaxed, sound meditations, and sound healing. So almost uh, your, your whole day will be um, about yoga and meditation, like full um, Great. dedication, full, de full dedication. I feel like uh, we've been uh, uh, sort of delving into a few subjects already. Maybe uh, would you be open to come back uh, in a few weeks time and maybe Go a second, do a second interview and go deeper on one aspect or the other because sound dealing we didn't touch about, we don't touch very much. Ah, uh, yeah, why not? Okay, yeah, sure, sure. Very good. But you know, sure. for today, thank you very much for coming here and uh, you know, introducing yourself. And uh, it's fascinating what you're doing, and also here in Chalaklam in Kopangan. So, thank you very much, Max. Thank you very much, Luca. Cap on cap. <laughs> <laughs>